Charlie D'Angelo. Yes, Bill. Unless your name has changed. No. So that's the name for every band that you've been in. Yes. Um, I'd like to just tell the audience that today everything that could go wrong went wrong, except that you're actually granting the interview. See? That went well. <laughs> yes. But everything else fell apart. And you're probably very happy to hear that all my questions are not with me. Uh, that that's a relief. That's such a relief. I've been worried about that, but now it's like I'm all good. Like, <sighs> yeah. And, and are you sad that I didn't bring a coven of witches to sit upon your lap? Uh, no, no. You know, I switch sides now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, no. I, I've heard that uh, certain Scandinavians yeah. don't even like a girl to be present in a photograph because the girlfriends at home suspect some sort of. Sex shenanigans. Uh, I guess it depends on what kind of girlfriend you have at home and what your you know track record is for things like that. Uh, you know, I've never been really worried about that. So I've always been very, very sort of like I can't really you know chew gum and walk at the same time. So it's like I have to. It's, it's, it's got to be one woman at a time. So I've never really gotten into trouble like that. There was also um, a complaint about certain American girls. And it's not about you, it's about Scandinavians, and if you don't mind being categorized along with them, yeah, yeah, sure. uh, that they're usually not very aggressive, they're almost afraid of women, or is that sort of uh, the charm of the Scandinavian man? It probably would be, you know, everybody loves a coward, don't they? Alright, so uh, have you ever had a girlfriend who accused you of infidelity? Uh, sort of, yeah, sort of halfway, uh, not really, but yeah, it, it, you know, it had sort of like been leaning towards that, I suppose, at times, but not really, not badly, you know, m most of the women that I've been with have trusted me, so they've had no reason to think otherwise. And have you ever suffered from a social illness, shall we call it that? You know, but define social illness. Uh, political practice? No, uh, <laughs> venereal disease. Oh, uh, no, actually, I've, you know, I've, it, nothing like that ever struck me. I have been tested time and time again, and, you know, I managed to escape. And these <laughs> these days, uh, I have nothing to worry about, but uh, in the past, there have yeah, been moments when I've been a bit scared. The reason I ask is, uh, at the Marshmallow Meltdown, years mm -hmm. ago, is that the correct way to say it? Marshmallow, yeah. <laughs> Uh, there was a certain pornographic actress who liked you, but you seemed to always be running away from her. Was it because uh, she was not a woman of virtue or because you were afraid of the, the after effects of possible contaminants? No, no, no. We, you know, I was, I was on a friendly basis with her, but, but, you know, but it was nothing like that. Was... What were your conversations usually like? I don't know. She likes metal. I like metal. All right, just wondering. Yeah. And how important is penis size to a Scandinavian? Well, like first to a Scandinavian man. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I, I I just know my own, and and yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm not very experienced when it comes to penises, uh, so I couldn't really tell you. It's not really something that you dwell upon. Not that much, no. Well, uh, you do check your email in America, correct? Yeah. And when you're in America, do you get constant spam about penis size, enlarging? I have a good spam filter. Is that what you're calling it these days? <laughs> exactly. All right, and it works. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, the thing that's important to me, if you don't mind me being selfish and asking a selfish question, mm -hmm. is uh, what is the status of Merciful Fate? Uh, I wouldn't know. I have no idea. Uh, nothing, I suppose, at the moment. Uh, the only thing, yeah, you know, last thing that happened was when they, they did, you know, re-recording re of a couple of songs for the uh, uh, Guitar Hero thing. But after that, I, I, I don't know if anything else has been planned. I haven't been in the loop or anything. So, you know, you should ask, ask King or ask Hank. They would know better. I really don't want to bother the King. He's recovering, right? I know, yeah. Have you talked to him during this? Uh, no, no, I haven't. But, I, uh, but uh, I've heard from other people that, you know, from real, reliable sources that he's doing much better. And he's, uh, you know, he's, he's a strong man. So, you know, he'll bounce back. 
Sure. Here's where journalism gets ugly. Yeah. Is it true that you are no longer in Merciful Fate? Uh, Never will be. No, no. I mean, I haven't. Nobody's fired me, at least. So, but I don't know what's going to happen. Like, if anything else happens, are they going to go back to? you know, original lineup, TVB in. I wouldn't mind that because, you know, I've never got to see the original lineup, so I would be all about that. <laughs> I would be front row. Uh, if anything happens, you know, and they ask me, I would definitely do it if I wasn't out with Arch Enemy. Uh, so, yeah, so, but this is, all of this is just guessing on my part. I have no idea because I haven't really talked to any of them in a long while, so. Well, I really should be the first one to tell you then Sometimes when you run your mouth, yeah. you don't really know who listens. Yeah. And one night you were referring to yourself as Prince Diamond, and the king really didn't appreciate that. Is that true or? I had no. <laughs> I Do you ever think... remember referring to yourself as Prince Diamond? No. no. I don't think I've ever done that. <laughs> Did you ever dress up as King Diamond for Halloween, or do no. you have th that in Sweden? We don't have Halloween as such. It's it's more of an important thing, imported thing. Um, but no, so I've never actually dressed up for Halloween ever, so the answer would be no. Has anyone ever come to you with a Charlie D'Angelo costume for Halloween? No, no, no. I mean, it's like, I've thought about it like that in the past, like, you know, what would I dress up? Like, it would probably be, you know, a KISS member, maybe. And some people might confuse that with King Diamond because of the Gene Simmons lawsuit. Well, no, no, because I was more thinking sort of Bruce Kulick, but, you know, I don't know. All right, so uh, is Arch Enemy your main band? Yes. And uh, back, I don't remember, in the 1900s when I last interviewed you, Yeah. you seem to be in every single band. Yeah. Uh, has that stopped? Were you told yeah. stop the side bands, concentrate only on... Uh, but, but, you know, there's still other things that, you know, going on in my life there's spiritual beggars and there's witchery uh you know i've done a few witchery shows over the summer festivals in europe uh same thing with spiritual beggars but uh arch enemy is just very time consuming it takes up at least like you know 23 hours out of the day so maybe that you know spare hour could be used for either sleep or more metal how do you refer to your singer of arch enemy uh, Angela, usually. And, all right, and she is not doing any interviews because she needs to conserve her voice. She doesn't do very many on the road now. Is that a new thing? No. No. And uh, did you ever give her pointers since you yourself are an aspiring death metal vocalist? No, because I'm not good at that at all. Have you ever wondered why God, why, why can't I be a death metal vocalist? Or is the bassist the best person to be in a band? I'm, you know, I'm happy playing bass. I wish I could be an awesome death metal folk. I wish I could be like the new David Vinson, you know, mu musically, I mean. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, I just don't have that kind of voice. I don't. I caught you. You didn't contradict me when I said, God, are you an atheist or were you just being polite and didn't want to... Just being polite. All right. So would you like to share with people I know you might lose fans if you admit that you don't embrace Jesus as your personal savior. Mm. Would you like to talk about that? How, how did you become a member of the path, the enlightened path? Uh, I've always, always been. I mean, I. it's like, you know, you believe in Santa Claus when you're a kid, but at some point... Uh, I still we, do. Yeah, you know, but that's you. Uh, and, you know, you find out that it's not true. Uh, but he might be an accurate historical figure of some sort, or it might have been somebody like him. Uh, but as far as anything else, I don't know. I mean, these are like, you know, it's just, these are just like tales that somebody sort of wrote down after a while. And that was like thousands of years ago, and or hundreds at least. Uh, I, you it know, changes from century to century. It, it, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. That's weird. Evolution, and they don't believe in evolution yet. Their story changes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's always nice. Yeah, uh, you actually believe in evolution, right? I do. Yeah. And you wrote a paper for it for your uh, master's thesis, correct? Several. And uh, is that available on the on the web, or do you like uh, to keep that 
part of your life separate from your musical life? Uh, it's available in bookstores uh, all over Moldavia. Very good. Yeah. And um, you've done Eastern European tours, correct? Yeah. Are those tours more for the love of the fans rather than any kind of monetary gain? Uh, well, I would think, you know, both. I mean, we all need to make money to survive, so we're not really going over there like, oh, you know, it's so much fun, but we're going to lose a lot of money. We, you know, we don't really do that anymore because, you know, we, we need to make money as well. Uh, you know, can't be losing money. But no, I mean, I, I love, love the Eastern European countries as with many other ones. Uh, you know, great fans there. Uh, and, you know, it's just visiting new places is always, you know, that's one of the bonuses of this, of this business. Could you hold the camera and just ponder as if you're very wise while I fix the microphone? <laughs> and you can see yourself. Have you ever been quoted as saying that you love your good and plenty? I uh, wouldn't know. Have I? Well, in America, there is a commercial that's probably capitalizing upon your fame that says, Charlie says, love my good and plenty. But you don't really speak in that grammatically incorrect way, do you? Usually not, no. So if someone were to offer you lots of money to speak in a grammatically incorrect sentence... But it, de it depends on if, if, if you're talking about the candy or <laughs> if you're talking about... Uh, how do you feel about the candy? I actually like that. I mean, I haven't had it in a long time, but it, yeah, I, I do enjoy that one, yeah. All right. For the sake of posterity, I will say, Charlie says, and then you say, love my good and plenty. No. <laughs> no? Really? No, no, no. Let me just no, try not, it. not unless they pay me. Let me try my version then. Okay. And if you're inclined to participate, then you can. Yeah. Charlie says... All right, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> do you mind if I put a caption of you thinking yep, that you were... That. <laughs> I won't do that, I won't do that. Yeah. Well, that might actually be funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell us how Arch Enemy has progressed, or have you become more simple? Uh, I think we've become better. Uh, Define better, because you know Jensen yeah. was in Seance, and he had those amazingly delicious, complex songs, and then he simplified them for The Haunted. Mm. How do you feel about doing such things yourself? whatever feels good do it i mean that's so that's it's just because like like old complicated death metal is your personal taste but you know might not be everybody's right. you know and as a musician you don't want to be doing the same thing you know for the rest of your life you know he, he you know he wrote complicated death metal riffs then but you know he's always had a great love for the uh, more straightforward thrash metal you know as you know like Exodus and things like that. So, you know, hence the um, haunted stuff. And now let's turn that over to the Charlie D'Angelo side of life. Yeah. Where, where do you feel most comfortable? You don't have to name the band, but what do you like to do as a bass player the most? Uh, play bass. <laughs> do you work on hip movements and such in front of a mirror? Uh, like David uh, but, uh, well, I don't really do it in front of a mirror anymore because, uh, you know, I, I think I sort of got it down by now. But uh, what is it? Is it the love of the sound? Is it the love of uh, using your fingers? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. It's good to be interviewed by you again, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No, uh, you know, I, I, I just like playing bass. I like, well, I like playing in a band. I like playing good music. Uh, I just ended up playing bass. Uh, and I enjoy it because sounds good to me. Did you ever cheat on your bass guitar and play another instrument? Yeah, what lots of times. Uh, well, you know, the uh, six string version with the, the thinner little strings, that one. Uh, you know, and I've sort of like dabbled a little bit and played a little bit of drums here and there and put my, uh, put my finger on a keyboard once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> Tinkle the ivories, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, your fans will be very happy to hear that. Yeah. Uh, all right, so as a, may I call you virtuoso? You, you, yeah, you may. It wouldn't, anyway, 
it won't be true, but... <laughs> It'll just make this interview better for both of us. All right, okay, cool. All right, so yeah. uh, as a virtuoso, do you look down on doom songs that are slow? No, no. no. Tell us all about your feeling of doom. My, <clears throat> my feeling of doom is a, is a good one. It takes me to a good place. Starting with uh, you know the first Sabbath album, and then via you know what have you, uh, Candlemas, uh, you know Trouble, of course, Early Cathedral, things like that makes me feel good. What about the more atmospheric stuff? Have you ever uh, esoteric from England? No, no. Oh, Shape of Despair, Finland. I've heard of them. I don't think I've ever heard them. I just advise you not to hear them on tour. Because yeah. it'll desolate your heart, and yeah. we need you to be upbeat when you're on stage. Yeah. So a day is something like early My Dying Bride and like oh, you know, okay. the, the Paradise Lost. Is that is that this is that kind of doom? It's you're even talking more atmospheric. Oh, okay. It's theater yeah. of the mind. All right. Okay. So I was just wondering because sometimes when people are growing as musicians, they look down on stuff that's uh, quote unquote easy to mm. play, and they look more for the dexterity playing. But you're beyond that. Yeah, I, th I think I think in any musician's life there there will be a point when you start sort of like discovering how to do stuff on your instrument and then you know you just you know you just want to progress technically and you you tend to listen or try to play music like that but then you know you start using your ears a bit more than your fingers and then you realize that hey it's actually pretty cool to just hit a note that you you know, will ring for a long while and you can go to lunch and then come back for the next note. So, you know, first uh, cathedral demo there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I was always curious because I've never seen you in that kind of band. There's always no, no, I've never been in, in a band like that, but I've, you know, I've, I've always enjoyed listening to stuff like it. Uh, so if someone threw you a couple of thousand dollars, <laughs> would you go into a studio and record something like that? It would more be if, if there was a really good doom band that wanted me to play on their album, uh, then it, I might do it, you know, nothing to do with money. Okay. You are a true artist then? Yes. Ah. So what is life like in Sweden for you? Do you do anything other than music to live? No. 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 That's, that's it. That's all I have time for. <laughs> are you known in Sweden when you walk down the street? Not really. Uh, if you, well, if you know, if you t attend uh, a place of a musical concert where there might be uh, bands of uh, you know, a similar genre playing, then there might be people there that recognize you. Uh, or if you go into a record store or something like that, but just going down to, you know, 7 Eleven to buy milk, no. All right, getting uh, to the video I have seen of Arch Enemy. There was a, a, a video in which Kate, it <laughs> came to talk. Uh, flags were being waved. Yep. And uh, they weren't like Nazi flags. No. no. Um, but in the beginning of the video, there was a body of water, and you were underneath the water, and you rose, but you weren't wet. Was that digital water? Uh, no, it was real water, and it wasn't me. Really? No. That's one of them things, because you can't really see his face there, but it, that was not me. And he was wet when he got up. I remember when the shot it, because like it, it was an, um, on an island off the coast of Stockholm. Um, and that was uh, about the first thing that they shot, like when we got there. He had to go out and submerge himself, and then just like, they just like screaming, like, you can come up now. And he's like, he can't come up with a plan. He, you know, that guy was a lot more handsome than I am, I, you know. I wish I could have looked like him, but no, no, so it wasn't me. Well, what was the significance of the flags and running with the flags? Um, uh, peace flags. Peace flags. Yeah, peace and love, baby. And I've noticed that uh, Angela, if I, if, my, if I may call her that. Yeah. That's her name, so it, it would be appropriate. Well, yeah. I just didn't want to seem like I was familiar. I <laughs> never met her. But she never really used the sexual side of herself in marketing Arch Enemy. Do you find mm. that you missed out on some money? Maybe we did, but I'd rather uh, her be comfortable <laughs> than, uh, you know, me being comfortably off, you know, because of, you know, she had to, like, you know, do something that she didn't want to do. No, I, I wouldn't want that. I, I, you know, I guess it's okay for some, but, you know, she's not really that kind of 
kind of person and we're not that kind of band. Did you have to go through a sexual harassment training video watching before going on tour with her? No. I think she would probably tell you if you're crossing the line, right? Probably so, yeah. But I noticed that women who do tour with male members, mm -hmm. well, a female member would probably not be... She said male member. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they get used to things, and usually the the women who adapt the best to those environments are women who have a lot of brothers. Yeah. So they get used to the farting, the uh, talking the way men do mm. sometimes. Uh, but yeah. have you ever been pulled aside and told, "Hey, you need to change some behavior"? Not really. No. 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 Are you saying that for your lady fans out there? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm. I'm just. I'm just, you know, a nice guy. You know, I don't do anything. Uh, I don't do anything. And you forget <laughs> the, the old hatred of uh, Swedes against Germans. Your national mm. hatred. Of the... Was there ever a hatred like that? I'm just. Because see, we were never invited. Well, it, uh, invaded. I meant to say, we were never invaded by them. Uh, I heard that you just let them walk through and exactly. do whatever they wanted. Exactly. Exactly. That's what that that's that's how we roll. Isn't that sort of compliance? Yeah. Like if you let someone kill others, you're guilty too, no? Uh, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> good, good stuff, isn't it? We, you know, we we really stood up for what we believed in back then. Well, uh, have you also noticed that there is some Scandinavian uh, cinema that has made its way to America? Some mm -hmm. has been ripped off, like Let the Right One In has mm -hmm. been remade. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the remake was good. I haven't seen the remake yet, but I've, you know, actually in in Swedish media, it was uh, it was given like rave reviews actually. Really? So, yeah. Well, so what I about uh, Neighbor or Next Door? I think it might have been a Norwegian film. I don't think I've seen that one. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. That one, yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't even seen that one. <laughs> really? No. All right. But so I know what it's about. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to know what yeah. you as a Swede think about the. The influence, rather than America being shown everywhere, that Sweden and Norway, if you don't mind talking yeah. about Norway, are also making a presence. In yeah, but, but I think that, I think that's good. I mean, see, the sort of like, cult, you know, <clears throat> cultural diversity is always good for everybody. I think. Uh, otherwise, everything would become pretty stale, wouldn't it? Or peaceful. <laughs> Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, what I tell people is that if there is a homogenous population, it doesn't mean that there are no arguments or differences. No, 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 that, that is very true. <laughs> Could you lift up one of your hands? And can you make a sort of puppet of it, you know, talking like that? And um, I don't want to take credit for this question, but being that I'm not really a journalist, I'm more of an asshole, a metal mm. asshole, mm. Uh, could you have that hands journalist ask you a question that is really important to answer for this interview? Because I don't think we've really covered anything at all musically other than your personal taste. Uh, um, uh, for instance, uh, hello. Hello. What are your influences? Have you ever been asked that question before? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't I, answer. I, you know what? I, I think we should fire that guy. All right. Yeah. Uh, is your hand better? No, I no. think I, I think we just let's just go with normal sibabisms. All right. Uh, well, I just want to give you a chance. I don't know yeah. if you have any news that must be broadcast. Uh, well, the only thing I think is like you know we're uh, we're on tour right now, in North America, uh, with uh, Devil Driver. Are you upset about that? No. <laughs> Very happy about that. <laughs> Kidding. We're the Devil Driver, uh, Skeleton Witch, and Chthonic, and we will be out here until uh, you know mid October almost. So, you know, come on down. We'll be glad to have you. Even if there's no hotel in the entire state open because of the gay military. I don't care. I'm not staying in a hotel tonight. So I it, care. It, it's this. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, I'm, I'm very really sorry for your. For, you know. I have to sleep in my car just so I can be drunk during your show. Yeah. See? Yeah. Well, you know, that's the price you pay, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. How metal Commitment. is that, Charlie? Well, I'll metal for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, right. Yeah, it's better that than, you know, you being gay for me. So it's, you know what I mean? That's off camera, Charlie. Yeah, all right.
right. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you. I guess there's nothing else to add. No, nah, no, nah, not really. I think we covered everything, and <laughs> we've been anatomically and philosophically correct to the whole, the whole interview. Was this surprising? You you probably expected an interrogation today. Well, you know, I think this was slightly interrogating, wasn't it? <laughs>